Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I've been away for a few days, so I, uh, sorry I haven't seen many uh, videos recently. It's a quiet time of year. The, uh, we're in the dearth. I'm in the middle of the mite treatment regime using uh, hop guard. And uh, what I am doing at the moment is getting a, a few things sorted out. Taking the opportunity to reach my hive tool here. I'm getting a few things sorted out. The uh, I'm in today. I'm in yards which are only just above nuke stage. Well, they're growing above nuke stage now. We have some still in single deeps and some with some uh, a second brood chamber added. A lot of the second brood chambers they haven't even moved into in the last few weeks. Because we're in the dirt, they're not expanding the brood chamber much. So uh, about two weeks ago, I started feeding as well. I'm putting a feeder out here. There's very few hives in the area, so open feeding is a fairly safe option here. Open feeding is problematic if you've got a lot of bees in the area. You can create a lot of uh, robbing activity. But... Um, in this yard, we've not got too big of an issue because we've got very few hives in the surrounding area. So, a bit of maintenance required here. You need to get out the weed whacker. And uh, we're going to get everything ready here. Every hive is going to get the second dose of hop guard. This is now two weeks since I applied the first dose. And every hive is getting another one. That's one of the reasons I just really don't like using hop guard. Number one, every time you dose it, it's expensive. And number two, when you've got brood in the hive, you have to dose at least twice to get an effective uh, mite reduction because we've still got brood in there and you have to treat them as brood emerges and new mites come out. But hopefully with the feeding we're doing, I should see a little bit of growth in these colonies, whereas in a dearth, you'd normally not see much growth. And if I'm also lucky, I'll find that one or two of these single story hives are going to be close to needing out of the brood chamber soon. But I'm perfectly happy to overwinter them as singles if that's all they need. So we have a little bit of activity. We don't have a great deal of clustering. Now that's probably because the colonies are still pretty small. They've got lots of room inside them. Um, I don't see clustering at the front, uh, which could mean that what field force they have is out uh, working the fields. So we'll see, we're starting to get goldenrod in bloom. And so many people ask me about goldenrod. The goldenrod, it's a big red herring really for you. The, uh, what I mean is that the goldenrod that blooms now, late July, early August, looks great and the bees do work it. Uh, but we see very little nectar usually accumulate with goldenrod. Um, at least the first species of goldenrod to bloom, this species. However, once we get the second species of goldenrod blooming, so this species here, I don't know what the name is, but when this is in bloom, you get bees on it. There's a bumblebee on it there, another solid, another small, uh, two other types of bee there as well on it. And it's great for pollen production. The bees work it to get some nectar, but I've never seen a significant honey flow from this species, at least here in Maine. Now the other species, the ones that are not in bloom yet and will be blooming in a couple of weeks time, that can be very different. When we get those other species blooming, which usually starts around the second week of August, well, third week of August, then we can get a very significant honey flow uh, and some years, none at all. So right now, we've got a couple of weeks before I would expect a reasonable chance of a full honey flow. So I wanna continue to build up my bees right now. I'm gonna add sugar, give them sugar syrup, continue to have that nest turning over. I'm not adding enough to really get them to grow much, but I'm enough, I wanna have enough that the brood is continuing to be built up. They're building a little bit of wax and so if, if and when we do get a good full honey flow, boom, there, they haven't almost shut down 
uh, because in sort of because of such a shortage of food around me. So I'll open things up and have a quick look. It's going to be another hot day. We're in the middle of quite a wave of heat in uh, this part of the country, as in many others. So most of my small colonies still have a small brood chamber because I only made these nukes up in June. So they're relatively late. So here I've got a brood nest with, we've got five frames of bees here. It's just big enough to treat with hot guard. And uh, I will move some of these frames, try and get this scented a bit more. But um, the most I'm hoping for from these bees is simply to get them up to an overwintering size. So right now, I don't have any ambition for this little hive, apart from getting it big enough and healthy enough to survive the winter. So I'm moving some of this comb to the edge of the brood chamber here. And I'll move another frame of foundation to this side as well. So I'm getting the colony a bit more scented. Well, they grow a little bit faster if they grow in both directions rather than just in one direction. And I'm going to add another uh, hot guard treatment here. What I will also do once I've finished with my um, hot guard treatments I'm going to come back around and balance some of these colonies. So any colonies like this that are still only, say, five frames of bees, I'm going to take frames of brood from the bigger colonies and move them into the smaller ones in order to uh, make sure we've got a really good thriving population at the time when they can really store some nectar, really store some pollen, and that will have them really ready for winter because we're getting them nice and clean of mites right now and health is the number one priority for winter but then food will be the next thing and the pop good population so our preparation for winter really does start in midsummer i usually say august but realistically you're starting your preparation for winter in july because that's when i'm doing my mite treatments okay we'll close this up we'll get the hot guard and start doing some treatments bag of 12 doses of hop guard here. Hop guard's been in really short supply this year. Because of the heat that everyone's encountering, it's been too warm to use Formic Pro, which I would much rather be using. Formic Pro is so much better because it will penetrate the brood and uh, hop guard does not. But with hop guard, if you make a couple of applications, it will treat as as the brood emerges and the new mites come out. So hop guard is a good fallback, but it's much more expensive and it's messy as hell to use. So let's get this one done. I'm leaving the first strip in from two weeks ago and adding a second ideally in a diff on a different frame not that it matters a lot so five frames of bees one strip of hot guard I'll see what the bigger colony might look like these are my Saskatraz bees so I get away with my sassy trays, I get away without using any smoke. Much better. These are a lot less aggressive than in the 
um, with the Italians, even during the dearth, which is very nice to see. Now, we've got progress up, up here. So I'm gonna put a strip upstairs because they are certainly moving up here. That is good to see. Want some of that food. Oops. That one. As I say, I'm going to do my equalization a little later on. I don't want to disturb these more than I have to. And also, we're heading up to 89, 90 degrees again today. So I want to get through as many yards as I can do this morning. But I really don't want to be out here for four hours in 90 degree heat. We've got a couple of frames of bees upstairs here. Maybe not quite enough. Up here, some honey, good. Need to go. I brought some of the feed along here as well. So let's see if we see any feeding activity before we leave.
I've got 12 hives here. I'm going to give them about 8 gallons of 1 to 1 sugar syrup here. This is just to keep things ticking over, keep life going on, keep generation of brood going on, and make sure that they don't go into such a hard dearth that they cut down brood production. You find that some races of bees do that a lot more than others. My Saskatrans tend to, do tend to cut down brood production during the dearth, but not so bad as uh, something like Russians or something like that. hive where I only put in one strip before and now I'm putting in two. That is a great sign. I'm going to keep my eye on this hive because this hive is showing much more aggression than the others, significantly more. And if that continues, I'm going to come around with a new queen. Very shortly what I'm going to do, I've decided with my group beekeeping 24-7 that I'm going to do some requeening of hives and so I'm going to raise some more queens this year, at least this is the plan, currently the plan. I'm going to raise some more queens and requeen some of these current colonies that I have going, particularly my Italians because I don't really want to be overwintering Italians, I want to be overwintering Saskatraz, which I've had far more luck with. And so what I'm going to be doing is replacing, putting in the queen cell from my Saskatraz colony, the queens, and putting them into my Italian lead hives. And that queen will emerge and supersede the Italian queen. There's almost always, when you put a new queen cell in a hive, the uh, young queen wins out over the old queen. So that colony there, showing some signs of aggression, which is unusual for my Saskatraz. I'll just uh, plunk in a new Saskatraz queen. And by the time we get into winter, she's mated, then we should have a much more, on average, gentle colony. been growing well. So they've stored a significant amount of food. So I'm not sure how much of that comes to feed it. Well I'm not giving them enough to store much food. So it's uh presumably the uh, honey flow is not terrible. It's not total dirt. One thing you very often find after you've had a mite treatment going is you see colonies rebound really nicely. Now that's certainly the case with uh, Formic Pro. But uh, it'd be nice to think that this uh, pop guard treatment is doing the same thing, sort of giving the, the bees a whole new uh, G up. Last year I overwintered all these colonies as singles. 
this year I decided the honey flow was so bad in this yard I was thinking of packing not having the bees in this yard at all this year but uh, they seem to be doing okay all this honey that's in the hives is not from feeding it's uh, what they stored so far and I'm quite actually quite impressed with what I'm seeing so what I've done is I did put a, a deep super a second brood chamber on the majority of these hives in the hope that with a bit of feeding and with a change of luck to some extent they would produce some uh, draw some comb out and indeed they, they are doing some comb drawing let's have a look look here the upstairs brood chamber is almost entirely built out now got white comb along here little edgings here where they've made extensions they've capped honey here I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing here that's nice you can even see them building comb in that last frame and this last one as well very nice when the honey flow starts hopefully I'll be able to put a honey super on these hives which would be a big jump on last year So with these hives being bigger, I'm going to go through my hot guard even faster. I've actually run out in the store. I've put aside a certain amount that I expect to need to finish off my second round of treatment. I just hope I put enough to one side. Because some of these hives that should only taken Two strips before a lot of these hives are taking two strips before are taking at least are taking three now and this one is taking four yeah looking at this hive I've got to come around with some honey supers here I want to have honey supers on before they need it not after they need it so I'll be stopping the feeding very shortly, but probably in about a week's time, I'll put honey supers on these hives again. So that's how you can take advantage of the dearth, the opportunity during the dearth. I mean, you still need to, uh, you need to be looking after them for sure. And, uh, but you can still get them building comb in the dearth as long as you feed them.
One more to go. Okay, my treatment's done. Need another feed. And we'll do some weed whacking. across in this open feeder is some floating sticks of wood here and then lots of straw over the top very few bees drown in it if you've got enough straw in there but some will add some more syrup I do have some yellow jackets in here. That's inevitable. The important thing is my honeybees are well fed. They're strong enough to defend themselves. And only under, in the fall, do I have to be really careful about open feeding. Open feeding now can be problematic for very small weak hives. These are not really small weak hives. These are in pretty good shape. But I want to keep them that way. So now the bees will go in and out of these two inch holes as and when required. Let's get the weed whacking done. Okay, uh, now the bear fence is going to work even better. So, what we have now, and also here's a tip, always do your weed whacking after you've worked your bees, not before, because the bees don't like it. So the bees now all have their second hop guard mite treatment, which means that they're going to be pretty low on mite as they're starting to build their winter bees from next week or so. They have an open feeder going on, which they're starting to find, and they will have uh, an adequate amount of sugar syrup going in here uh, to continue to grow their brood chamber, continue to build a little bit of wax, and get them revved up, ready for a whole full honey flow so if I'm coming around for a full honey flow, I'll stop feeding, put queen excluders on top of my two-story hives, and uh, we'll get them maybe to produce a super of honey if we get a nice full flow. By no means is that guaranteed. Goldenrod flows are so fickle around here. 
uh, if only maybe one in two years you get a good fall honey flow now having said that i haven't seen a good whole funny fall honey flow for about six years now, last year we had some fall honey flow here and the year before we had a nice one in winterport but uh we shall see right so that's it for now go on to other yards i've got two more yards where i've got to do exactly the same thing because the hives are only one story high maybe two but all single or double brood chambers so uh i've not got any honey supers on those three yards these three yards here so that's why i've got a fair amount of feed with me to keep them charged up hopefully in a couple of weeks i can stop feeding and actually produce some honey i'm peter cowan the bee whisperer see you next time <laughs>